you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I mentioned earlier, and I mean it with my heart, uh, all of you here today are heroes. But you're embarking upon this journey. It's a very heroic journey. Uh, it takes a lot of guts to do what you're planning to do. And you're going to make a lot of mistakes on the way. And some of you will succeed, and most of you will fail. And that's okay. That's okay, because this is the best time in Pakistan's history to be launching a venture for many reasons. I'll be speaking about that. But before I talk about that, I want to tell you my story. I was, I was in the same chair as you, around your age, with all of these ideas, sort of had some good ones, had a lot of bad ones. I didn't really understand what would happen once I launched my business. Very ambitious, started launching it, realized well, I got the tech part right, but I didn't really understand the business model. So I moved back to Pakistan uh, in 2003. When I moved back to Pakistan, there were 3 million people with internet access. 3 million. How many are there today? 60 million. 3 million people, no smartphones, no Facebook. Or who internet users, they were people who were connecting mainly on dial-up or DSL. Very painful. And most of them would access the internet from the office because office kept them, they would have internet access. It was in this climate that we launched our first product, Naseeb.com, which was a social networking site, Muslim social networking site, mainly for expats in the US and UK, Canada. And created an idea, a model around it, didn't know what would really happen. But one thing was for sure, we said, we're going to do the freemium model. I saw a few people around freemium. Well, it works. But you don't know if the EVM part will ever happen. You know if the free part will happen, but you don't know if the EVM part will happen. So I didn't have any money. We we were working in a small room of my house. I have a guest bedroom, Nietzsche. Or it was a small room about maybe this big. And that's where I launched. I was doing the coding. I hired three other people. One was a network person, one was a graphics person, and the other was a coder. And together we launched this site, and I said it's called Freeman Rutger, man. We hosted our site to the server in the US, one server. That's all I could afford. And uh, launched the site and said, one server is more than enough. We launched the site, and one of the things we did right was before we launched, we created pre hype. We created a scarcity between supply and demand. We said something exciting is about to happen, and you want to be a part of it. And we didn't say what it was that was exciting. But the mystery we created was enough to generate about 20,000 registered emails who were interested to know what we were going to do after we launched. We spent a lot of effort getting email lists of the target group of people that we were trying to market to. We launched the service. It was a social networking site. You could build profiles, add friends, interact with us, communicate. And we launched the site, and the response was great. It was about 5,000 people enrolled, I think, in the first week. And then we had another 3,000, 4,000 every day adding on. And what happened quickly was my servers crashed. And because we had the servers, they, they crashed. And I never knew how to build a site that would scale to the extent that we needed. First failure, I didn't anticipate it. The demand was great. So then, from here in Pakistan, we had to get new servers. And in those days, you didn't have Amazon. You just slap on a new server. We had to buy servers. You had to buy a server, have it shipped to the center, have a person at the data center to do your IP and networking, have it on, on the system. And every week we're adding a new server, which was very, very hard and onerous. About uh, six months after we launched, we had about 180,000 active users. Free the was over the server. Everything was free. Free, free, free. People were using it. Um, I, needed, I needed to make money. I moved back to Pakistan. I had no income. Uh, and this was how I was going to make my income. So there's a lot of uncertainty in this, a lot of uncertainty in where you're sitting. You know, so even when you build a product that's somewhat successful that seems to work, the next question is, can this be interesting from a revenue point? And you have to focus on that because first challenge is creating a product that people will use. Next challenge is making money from that product. And that's the one that will make the difference in whether this is going to be able to sustain you or not. And that's why I've been emphasizing about focusing on the market and the business side as opposed to a tech side. So what we decided was it was a free site, a lot like Facebook. And 
we said the way we're going to make money freemium, the premium part of it is that if you want to contact people outside your social network who aren't your friends, you have to pay. Now, if you're a paid individual on the site, then you could speak to anybody. We didn't know if there would be a demand for that, if it would really work. So what we did was, I remember Uswat, we had grown to about 12 people. We couldn't fit in my house anymore. I rented a small office in STC. And we integrated a credit card processor at that time. We were going to charge people with a credit card, and they're going to pay us, or they might not pay us. So we created the feature where people put up sell and pay with a credit card, and we had packages for one month, three months, six months, starting at $9. And most of our users were in the US. So, Shemitha Gyada it was 12 o'clock at night, at midnight. I was at STC. There was a McDonald's that opened on Bay Villa Bar that you've seen. I was overlooking the arches of you know, McDonald's. America's at the office. And it was very strange to be in the hall overlooking the McDonald's again. And at midnight, we were going to make the release live that was going to allow people to pay. And I didn't know if anybody would pay. Midnight, we flipped the switch. And I sat in my office looking at my screen. I would get an alert. Every time somebody paid, I'd, I'd see an alert. One minute, nothing. Two minutes, nothing. Five minutes, nothing. And it was a depression. We built everything. We tried to do everything right. No one's paying for this. It's going to be a tremendous failure. You're going to find yourself in this situation many, many, many times. Minute number six. Nine dollars. And that was the sweetest nine dollars I've earned in my life. I can't tell you how good that nine dollars felt. Thirty seconds later, twelve dollars, twenty dollars, eighty dollars. And every one minute, two minutes, a transaction would start to come in. And it was so exciting to sit there and watch that happen. This is the entrepreneurial journey. This is the risk you take. And sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. That night, we made $28,000. And that site became tremendously successful. It was a cash cow. It allowed me to invest in a lot of the other things I'm doing now, which include the job site that you know with rosie.pk. Uh, and then we eventually raised institutional investment. So VC started approaching us with Rosie and saying, this is very interesting what you're doing. Do you want to raise investment? So Rosie was the first internet startup in the country to ever raise foreign VC investment, and we've raised a few rounds since then. And Alhamdulillah, it's been a great journey. It's been a, it's been a rewarding journey. Uh, and along the way, we made a lot of mistakes. But what I want to tell you is, I was sitting where you are, and I was at that same situation, but is this a good place for me to invest my career? I'm fairly educated. I can earn a lot of money if I work, and I do this and that. And we took that risk. And six, eight months, I didn't know if that risk would pay off. It could have been a colossal failure. But I just want to tell you that sometimes it does pay off. And you have to iterate, and you have to keep trying, and you have to listen to this amazing advice you've gotten. In fact, it was interesting. Aapke ideas, when they were being pitched, I would have comments and concerns because I would say, yeah, I tried this, this will not work, this is going to fail. And these are experiences but before I could say it to you, one of the other people already said it. So the feedback you've gotten here is tremendously valuable, will save you a lot of heartache, and I highly advise you to seek out to all of these people here. But I had it difficult when I started Rosie. I had it very difficult. There are hardly any internet users. People would say, I'm with the you're going to fail. You can't do what you're trying to do in Pakistan. People don't hire online, they hire through newspapers. This is what everybody was telling me. They said, six months from now, you're going to be on a plane going home to America. Everybody discouraged me. The other issue was, internet users didn't think There wasn't a trend for the internet. We didn't have this handset where now you can access the internet from anywhere you are. Nobody ever funded an internet startup here in Pakistan before. So a lot of first happened. But now those first have happened several times. VCs keep all the interest in Pakistan. It's probably one of the most exciting emerging areas of the world to invest in on a fintech side, on a classified side, on e-commerce side. You've seen the transactions happen. Alibaba has invested and financials invested. You know, I think aggregated it's going to be over half a billion across these investments. 
Um, we've raised additional financing. Other organizations have raised extra investment. VC funds are now being created inside the country. Rubil is doing one, a few other people are doing one. So investment capacity, they're accessible to you. And for the first time in the history of the country, you can reach anybody through their smartphone. 50% of all adults in Pakistan now have internet connected smartphones in the villages, in the mainstream areas. So the distribution problem is solved. E-commerce, the way to pay, there's so many ways to pay. You can use a credit card, you can use Easy Pass, Simpson, COD, those problems are largely being solved. You've got another ID card where you can check identity online to build trust. Uh, Pakistan has one of the fastest growing group of people in the world, middle class. It's emerging and you're seeing it. You're seeing it on the streets with the number of people who drive on motorcycles now. They're crowding the streets. Cars are crowding the streets. People who are going to stores and buying. The retail sector is growing. So you've got a middle class that's growing very, very quickly. Land prices are going up as a result. So you've got a market size that has disposable income, that's internet enabled, and that needs these innovative products so that they don't have to go to the market to buy things and to do things that you can automate online. Investment capacity in an object. You need to be resourceful and find them. You've got places like this, which is a fantastic platform for you to exploit because of the mentors, because of people involved with this. This is a great program to be a part of, access to those VC funds. So this is the best time to be doing what you're doing. And the risk you're taking makes you a hero in my book. And if you fail, it's okay. Don't worry about failing because the next thing you do, you'll be so much smarter when you do it. Thank you very much. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much.